Oh, he'd be in a dead sprint down the field. Nobody can catch him. His cleats would fall off and he'd be running in his socks and score a touchdown. What? There's a difference between losing competitively okay. and just flat out giving up. Michigan just had their way with you. Against Penn State last year, Michigan handed off the ball, ran the ball like 50 times or something like that. It's unheard of. Okay. Most teams don't even get like 50 plays off. And if they do, they're mostly passes. But Michigan was just like, eh, we're not even going to try and pass. We don't need to. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. I hit record this time. So now we are here. You guys just Thank missed, you, Andrew. Yeah, you guys Appreciate just missed it. 20 plus minutes of conversation that will never be heard on the show now. Right. Um, I am Andrew. This is my beautiful wife, Nona. We are your hosts. Got it right that time? You got it right that time. Okay. Uh, I am wearing a hockey sweater today because Michigan is a hockey school. Okay. I am very, very upset, very disappointed with the way the season has gone. There's a difference between losing competitively okay. and just flat out giving up. And Not that's e what you feel happened this past Saturday? All season for the most. After the Texas loss, this team has not tried. There's no hard. And that was the second game? Yeah. Okay. And in that, So they put forth a little bit of effort on that very first game and then just gave it all up? Yeah. The, it, the whole team's falling apart. Nobody wants to be there. No, do you remember, what was it, two years ago when Cooper's team just absolutely sucked? And like bit. the kids just like kept showing up, but they were like moping around. Nobody really wanted to be there. They were it, getting. I, it was kind of the same situation if you think about it. Um, half the kids on that team left to go play for their schools because they had kind of aged out of the program. Twelve was the limit. All right. And kind of the same situation with here. It's a completely new team. Everybody is in the NFL now. So there was good last year. But there's there's a mentality for teams and schools and stuff like that, mm -hmm. where when you know, you know that you you don't have a season. Like next year is going to be your season again, okay. but this year you're rebuilding. You're trying to find the right guys and the right roles. The coaches well, are- Well, they didn't find the right guys, obviously. Right, right. But that's what I'm saying is when you're in that position, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, now our goal this year is just to wreck everyone else's season. Well, obviously nobody has the scrappy mentality. Right. That's and they thought this whole season was just going to be handed to them because it, they've come off of a huge win. Yeah, the culture has just gone. You know, there's no leadership. There's no – nobody's buying into the program. Nobody wants to be there with that coaching staff. And that's a huge problem that I had brought up previously when I said that, you know, he needs to be fired now mm -hmm. because now – we have recruits and commits that are supposed to come in next year, like huge recruiting class. Who are possibly not going to. No, now they're already taking tours at Other. arrivals. The number one receiver in the country was supposed to come to Michigan next year, and now he's... Looking at Ohio? No, he's going to Washington, which I don't know why okay. Washington, but there there are some players who do have a moral compass mm -hmm. in... If, you like know, still stick it out. No, 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 that that like hate Ohio State and want to go to Michigan, but because they don't want to go to Michigan and squander their ability to go to the NFL, they're still not going to go to Ohio State or Notre Dame. Gotcha. They'll go to another big school, and there's there's a lot that goes into it, right? Like these guys consider everything all the way down to how many other four star, five star receivers are at that school. How much playing time am I actually gonna get? Right. Like it might you might have like an Alabama or an Oregon or whatever who has like two, three years worth of guys that are still on the roster that haven't gotten playing time. And you're either just as good as them, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse. So do you want to sit there and do nothing or do you want to go and play for another team and rack up your stats? So they look at all of this stuff. So what would fix it, Andrew? Firing Sharon Moore. That's it? Because, so this year is already gone, right? That's just chopping the head off. I think the whole shebang needs to be redone. Yeah, but you start with firing the head coach, bringing okay. in a new head coach. And who would you choose? Michigan. <sighs> Dave Portney? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring Dave Portney in, for sure. <laughs> um, 
so this year's already gone, right? So right. you you fire him, you bring in an interim coach, you start revamping now because you have players on the roster, you show the recruits that we can turn this around, mm -hmm. you win out some major games to close out the season, okay. you win your bowl game, and now you have a positive outlook going into 2025. You don't, but he has to be gone. Yeah. If you don't fire him now, mm -hmm. he loses the major games coming up, potentially loses a bowl game if they even make it. You have to be at least six and six to make a bowl game. And they now have two losses? Three. Three? Yep. Ooh. Sorry, guys. So you go in, you you lose out those games, and you go into next year, and now players, recruits and stuff are looking at that like, I don't want to play for a losing culture. Right. So now you've lost an entire year's worth of recruits. The next year's recruits are like, I don't want to be on that team. I don't right. want to watch 2025 squandered as well. Right. So it has, it has to happen now. He needs to be gone before the end of the season. All right, fix it, Dave. No. That's fix your it, new Dave. Nick Dave. <laughs> Fix it. Like fix it, Dave. Wreck it, Ralph. Fix yeah. it, Dave. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. the I mean, the headlines, everything, people, I went around all over X, Twitter, mm -hmm. posting, replying to, you know, saying Santa Ono needs to fire Ward Manuel and Sharon Moore. Their entire uh, coaching staff. What was that? You heard that too, right? That was mm -hmm. weird. Um, yeah, just... Fire them all. Bring somebody in. Michigan's basketball team, okay, basically just did this. Michigan's okay. basketball team had a couple bad years, or they had a couple of good years initially under, uh, what's his name from the Fab Five? I can't even fucking think of our basketball coach's name. Um, fired him okay. after a bunch of both on and off court nonsense. And... Hired a guy named Dusty May, who I had never heard of. Okay. And they won last night in their first exhibition game by like 60 points. Congratulations like, to them. I, whoever Dusty May is, good job. He's pulled in all kinds of people off of uh, the transfer portal. Basically, he rebuilt this entire team Okay. from the ground up in the last couple months. And they're, they're, they went from a team that last year did absolutely nothing, got blown out by everybody, okay. to a team that looks like a contender in one game. And that's what a big school with money like Michigan can do right. with the right coach and the right coaching staff. Well, good luck, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> You've luck. got the money. <laughs> do it, Dave. Do the right thing. Fix it, Dave. The, like the fact that he said I'm working on it, I want to know <laughs> what the actually he's doing. Yeah, I want. He's probably just texting people. You fucking suck. I don't know. Dave is um, for the character that he plays. Character. Like how, I hate that. Why? You're playing a character right now. Ew. You are. I'm my own person. Right. I, I am me. But the conversations that you would have here on the podcast are not the conversations that you would have in private. You're right. I would never choose to talk about football. We're talking about football because this is a football episode. Yeah. But on a day-to-day, -day, I would not choose to talk about football. It's in the, the worst. I'm going to be experiencing my first football game this Saturday. At the biggest stadium never in the world. Never been to a football game in my entire life. You're going you're gonna to walk up and you're going to see the building from the outside and you're going to be like, it looks wide, right? Okay. Because the Michigan Stadium is a giant bowl. Okay. It's one of the only ones that the – what Fielding Yost and what Bo Schembechler – what Fielding Yost way back in the day in the 20s said okay. when the stadium was built was that everybody in the stadium should be able to see everybody else in the stadium. That's why they don't have like the tiered decks and everything like that. Even the suites have glass panes between them. So, so you, you can, can see in the suite next to you yep, or below you? All the way around. around. All the way below you. Okay. The Even the, the glass on the suite. And yes, I wish we were in a suite because I'm going to freeze my freaking ass off. I'm going to be so cold on Saturday night. The, the glass on the suites leans forward. So cool. in the front, yeah. So you look down, you can see everybody. Everybody can see up. Everybody can see left. Everybody can see right. If anybody wants to pay for us to upgrade to a suite, I would not say no. So you <laughs> might have so actually cold. bought you might have actually bought the tickets like a couple days too early. What? Because nobody wants to go to that game now. Fuck. Yeah. Might have gotten them even cheaper. <sighs> I'm not gonna go look now. 
that's just going to make me cry inside and my bank account is already not happy. So yeah. whatever, well, whatever. Thank, thank you for the tickets though. Whatever. I'm happy to be going there with you. I typically don't go to a mid or late season Michigan game because he hasn't been the entire time that we've been together. So nothing yeah. is typical. Well, of all the games that I've gone to, I typically go to a game in the first four weeks. Sometimes big games like against Notre Dame and stuff. Um, that for probably my entire life, that was really the only big early season game that Michigan ever played. If if they didn't play Notre Dame, they were only playing cupcake cupcake teams early season. Okay. But now with the expansion of the conferences and wanting to add an additional conference game into the season and stuff, it's more regular now that there's going to be a big game in the first even two weeks. Mm -hmm. Michigan has the home and home with Texas, so next year they'll play Texas at Texas. So we'll see how that goes. Texas imploded this weekend against Georgia, though. Does that make you feel a little better? No. <laughs> Any team that you lose to, you want them to be great because then it makes you look like at least you only lost to a good team. Gotcha. If you lose to a terrible team and then they lose out the rest of the season, it makes you look worse. Well, Michigan's pretty bad this season, yeah. so yep. there's no perception issue. It's just bad. Yep. The worst football team that I have ever seen fielded in my entire life. That's saying a lot. The year-over-year -year stats for the team is the biggest drop-off for any college football team ever in history. Mm. That's not normal. That's a coaching problem. There's like 126 or 136 teams in FBS, like Division One, the basically all the teams that are that can play each other that are okay. equals. And Michigan ranks almost dead last in every Damn. single metric. Does that make you cry inside? No, it makes me angry because it's a coaching problem. This, <laughs> it's it'd be different if you didn't have talent and the team was just bad and had always been bad. Mm -hmm. But the team has the number one and number two running backs in the country. Okay. The best corner. Who are not injured currently? Right. The, okay. The best corner in the entire country, the two best defensive linemen that are probably going to go first and second in the NFL draft. Okay. And their talent is being completely wasted by coaches that don't know how to call plays and people just, they look like they're lost on the field. They don't look like they know what they're doing. Nobody has any confidence. Nobody knows what their assignments are. They're just out there. Like it, it looks like watching cash is flag football. Yeah. Or the, the teams that they've been demolishing this yeah, whole they're, season. They're just standing around missing tackles. Oh, you ran by me. Oh, here, let me attempt to tackle you from over here. <laughs> That's how it's been. It's so pathetic. It is, it's embarrassing to watch. There's, there's only been five teams or six teams or whatever in the last like 30 years that have come off a championship and lost more than, or lost two games. And mm -hmm. now we've lost three. So Michigan is objectively the worst championship team ever in the following season. It's pretty bad. Yeah. It's like even the, the two worst coaches that Michigan has had in recent memory, Sharon Moore is already worse than both of them in every aspect. Wow. How long was Harbaugh there for? Uh, I believe 2015 was his first season. He was hired the end of 2014, I believe. So you're talking about coaches pre Harbaugh? Yeah. Gotcha. So Lloyd Carr retired um, 2007, I believe, maybe 2008. Okay. Um, and then we had Rich Rodriguez, who completely tried to overhaul and like turn Michigan into Michigan is what's called a ground and pound team. Like Michigan just wants to control the ball and just run it at you over and over and over and over again and make you hurt. Mm -hmm. They're not a team that puts up 70 points. They don't want to. 
Okay. They want to wear you down, make you hate being there, and then you never want to play them because every time you try and snap the ball, you're just getting crushed. They just want to completely manhandle, dominate you, men versus boys, basically. Okay. And they have up until this year. So you're saying it's just boys playing now? Michigan's offensive line won uh, the Joe Moore Award, or Joe... Joe Moore, is that what it is? For which is an award for the like cumulative award for the best offensive line. They won it three years in a row because they just absolutely dominated every defense. You couldn't do anything. Michigan just had their way with you. Against Penn State last year, Michigan handed off the ball, ran the ball like fifty times or something like that. It's unheard of. Okay. Most teams don't even get like fifty plays off, and if they do, they're mostly passes. But Michigan was just like, eh, we're not even going to try and pass. We don't need to. We're just going to literally hit you so hard over and over again at your own stadium that you don't want to be here. So you just want to go back in time and relive last year, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> but so Rich Rod tried to change, tried to turn Michigan into like an organ. Okay. Completely failed. We had some really great players and like some electric crazy games Mm -hmm. uh denard robinson who actually was just arrested a couple months ago for dy um he was an assistant coach for michigan the last couple years um he was like one of the wildest quarterbacks that we've had forever they called him shoelace because he literally wouldn't tie his cleats what and he was like he was like our best running back and quarterback yeah it was and would run with his laces untied yeah yeah never never tie his laces that's Half, wild. He'd be in a dead sprint down the field. Nobody can catch him. His cleats would fall off, and he'd be running in his socks and score a touchdown. What? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Um, so you had him. Like those were like kind of okay years because Michigan was still competitive, but it just like wasn't Michigan football. Okay. And then Brady Hoke came in, and just it's like we're Michigan. We're, you know, we're going to get back to the basics, and everybody was really hyped on him. And then he didn't. I think his last. I think. Um. Oh my gosh, Rich Rod's last season, I believe he was like five and seven or four and eight or something <laughs> like that. And then we, we apologize for Conehead back here. It's major allergy season, so she's and she only comes down here when we're recording podcasts. She's, she's not ever out here. She's always somewhere else. But now that we're out here, she she's has to be out miserable. Here. Yeah, she just wants to remind us how miserable she yeah. is with her allergies. And so, yeah. Brady Hoke came in, Michigan man. He coached under Lloyd Carr. Everybody was really hyped on him. Oh, he'll bring us back to like the Lloyd Carr days. And then terrible. Gotcha. And then they got Harbaugh. There was talks at that time. uh, They were looking at Harbaugh, but he was in the NFL, and they didn't think Michigan would ever get Harbaugh away from the NFL. Mm -hmm. So they were looking at Les Miles, who was at LSU up until even just recently. Um, and a couple others. So yeah, I don't even, Michigan would have to hire somebody away from another blue bud for it to be meaningful to Michigan fans, which is possible because Michigan has more money than most of them. Okay. There's already been talks that uh, people have said Michigan should go after Oregon's head coach because he, Oregon's, I think they're ranked number one now. Oh, wow. But like, look what just happened. Kalen DeBoer was the coach for Washington. Nick Saban retired. Michigan beat Alabama and then beat the living shit out of Washington. And then Kalen DeBoer went from Washington to Alabama. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's possible to, you know, get coaches away. But the, all the Oregon fans are like, oh, Oregon has the Nike money and there's no way Nike. And uh, Phil Knight will give him anything he wants. I'm like, cool, you have a shoe company. Michigan has just as many rich people willing to give their money. They're like, oh, well, Oregon Oregon can always do more. And I'm like, so why isn't Oregon doing more? Oregon's not even in the top 15 NIL teams this year. Oh, really? Yeah. I think they are number 16. Okay. So if your hypothetical daddy Nike is going to give all this money. Daddy Nike. Yeah. If he's going to do this, why hasn't he already? Why isn't he paying the most for the best players? 
If he's going to, why isn't he now? <laughs> I'm just giggling at daddy Nike. Yeah. So what, what I think could potentially happen, mm -hmm. Oregon goes on, wins the Big Ten, okay. but gets destroyed in the playoffs. Okay. Fans get angry. Coach gets hired away by Michigan. Because one of the things that they have to do in those kinds of contract negotiations, mm -hmm. they have to buy out the contract. That so that's sense. another, that's something that Michigan has to consider when firing Sharon Moore. Mm -hmm. Sharon Moore's contract is like half a million a year, something like that. And how many years did he sign for? Five. Like a small, but the, they have what they call like guaranteed money and there's like buyout clauses and stuff like that. So, gotcha. and performance, both bonuses and, you know, if you don't win X amount of games within this timetable, mm -hmm. then, you know, your, the buyout of your contract is reduced, blah, blah, gotcha. blah. So th they incentivize you to do well. Right. And if you don't do well, you lose money. That makes sense. Yeah. So whatever uh, and the the Oregon coach is currently being paid I looked this up when I was having this conversation he's not even like the top 10 highest paid coaches right now okay so Michigan you know could definitely pay him more backs the money truck up backs the money truck up I think he's being paid 6.3 million a year right now Damn. Harbaugh was being paid 8.4 when he left with plus bonuses I think he would have I think he made over 12 million dollars last year Wow. So it's not chum change. Yeah. You go to his name is Dan Landing. You go to Dan Landing, you throw eight million at him okay. after a successful season. Okay. With the same sort of bonus and incentive structure Sounds that Sounds like you've had. already chosen who is going to take over. You're like, this is gonna happen. Dave D is gonna fix it. He's he's probably a long shot at this point, but I if if Oregon wins out, there's no chance. Gotcha. And you have to have an interim coach or somebody in contract negotiations at the same time as you make the decision to fire your existing coach. Because typically your interim coach is the person that you plan to hire or you bring up from within so it would be an assistant, but we want Michigan's assistants gone. Right. So you have to have somebody that you bring in. There's been a couple coaches that have been fired this far into the year, but they're not coaches that Michigan wants. Right. So it's it's a bad situation that again Ward Manuel is responsible for <laughs> blaming him. We've Michigan fans have hated him basically since he got hired. And how long ago was that? Uh probably close to 10 years ago. Gotcha. Probably So then why is he still around? <laughs> failing upwards. Okay. <laughs> and Santa Ono's contract was just extended. The president of the University of Michigan, his contract was just extended. And he's like, you know, loves all the teams and athletic departments and everything like that. So I think he, he should just fill in as the athletic director, fire Ward Manual, find a new athletic director, go after Dan Lanning or honestly, like even though I hate Brian Kelly, even Brian Kelly would be a better coach. And where's he at? Uh, LSU. He was at Notre Dame forever gotcha. before. So that's really why you hate him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but Brian Kelly at least is like, <laughs> he's very, very passionate about football. Okay. Very, um, he gets very angry when, and he, but he's, he's extremely, extremely, uh, structured and, um, his players are always, uh, what do you call it? I'm completely spacing right now. Disciplined. Yes. I just pulled that on my ass yeah. guessing that that's where you were going. Like you sneeze at the wrong time. And you're going to get punished. Okay. And they don't. Okay. But 
he's never won anything. He's been like on the cusp all the time, mm -hmm. but never actually won anything. And you, do you think that's a him thing or his players thing? Um, probably a little bit of both. Notre Dame likes to say, oh, uh, you, know, you have to have really good grades to come to Notre Dame, and mm -hmm. Notre Dame is very picky. And, well, shut up. It's football. <laughs> Most the 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 uh, like average test scores and IQ and everything of like major D1 athletes are ridiculously high. The Michigan year in and year out wins academic honors for like the team as a whole. Right. There like there's awards for that too. Like how what's the GPA of the the team cumulative? Mm -hmm. And they win academic so they're right on par with you. Pretty much all of the blue buds the with the exception being Alabama. Their like average GPA was like 2.3. What? Yeah. That's why everybody was like, dude. I thought you weren't allowed to play if you had a low GPA. You no, know, it's like 2.0 or 2.5 or something like that in the SEC. It's one of those two. That's so low. Yeah. yeah. Big 10 requires, I believe, a 3.0. Okay. Or 2.7 or something. It's like like a C average, like a high C average or whatever. But 2.2? Yeah, I believe so. That's so bad. I'll pull it up right now. But everybody's dumb down in Alabama yeah. anyway. That's probably all they can do. What is the GPA required by an SEC football player? Something went wrong. Sounds on par for the morning that we're having. Yeah. To be eligible to play, 2.3. Including in the SEC, you need to meet certain academic requirements. Here's a breakdown. GPA. You need a minimum core course GPA of 2.3. This GPA is calculated based on specific core courses required by the NCAA. You have to have an 18 on the ACT and an 860 on the SAT. S A T. And yeah, the those are pretty low. Yeah. <laughs> those are pretty bare bone standards. What is the requirement to play football in the Big Ten for GPA? Bare bone what? It picked up me saying bare bones. It's just telling me the same NCAA requirements. So the NCAA minimum was two point three, which That's wildly yeah. low. Yeah. Let me see if I definitely thought it was going to be like a 3.0 or something. Big 10 GPA requirement for football. I'm just going to Google search instead of asking Gemini. And I 3.0, straight line cut off a 3.0 to play in the Big 10. Okay, good. So yeah, they're overwhelmingly football players are very smart. Linemen, that's like a a trope of line because their job though doesn't appear skilled because they're not fast mm -hmm. is the most difficult. They have the most things that needs to be remembered. They have the most responsibility. They have the linemen have the hardest job and overwhelmingly they're the smartest people on the team. Like it's, if you were to ask anybody off the street that knows anything about football, that is and say, who do you think is the smartest, you know, group of people on a college football team, they're going to say the linemen. Good to know. Yeah. Those guys are usually like all honors classes, like, um, you know, whatever AP, whatever it's called in college. Um, yeah, they, they have the best grades. They're typically like the team tutors. Nice. Yeah. And they, you don't, maybe wanna, you can encourage Cooper to continue. They're they're also the enforcers. You don't want to fuck with the linemen. You don't want to fuck with. Six can you say there was somebody on the Michigan team right now who did not play football at all and then just walked onto the field this yeah, season? Yeah, or kicker, or not this season, two seasons ago. But yeah. No, you were talking about this season. He is playing this season, but he walked on two years ago. Okay. We had Jake. So Moody. the kicker. Yeah. Oh, so did he play soccer his entire life? Yeah. Oh, oh, that makes so much more sense. The way that you you only gave me half the information. It's, it's near impossible to walk on to any major university. No, but that, and play football. that makes so much more sense. 
kicking accurately kicking a football is nothing like kicking a soccer ball. I understand ball. that, they but have, it takes skilled footwork. So you made it out like some random person who'd never played sports in his entire life walked onto the Michigan field and got on the team. You left out half the information. Not half. Yeah. No. As a kicker and then that oh. he played soccer his entire life. That makes so much more sense. So thank you for the rest of the information. So I have the full picture. Yeah. Anyways. So, and that's the only bright spot on the football team right now is we have a kicker that can kick basically farther than any NFL kicker can kick. He can routinely hit like 55 to 60 yard field goals. And Good. the average is like 40. Good. Except that's the only thing you have going except for you. Michigan can't make it to that spot on the field. Right. <laughs> Yesterday's points or yesterday's score is the lowest that they've scored in like 10 years. Yesterday? You mean two days or, ago? Yeah, Saturday. Do you even know what day is? No, I don't. Wow, okay. It was the lowest points total Michigan has had in any game in over 10 years. What was the total? Seven. And how much did the other team get? 21. But that's actually only two touchdowns. They kicked two field goals and then went for a two-point conversion to make it a 14-point game. Gotcha. Yeah. And they, they ran. It was all bad. They ran a fake punt. Michigan could have gotten the ball back down 17-3, to three, okay. and they had just come off a pretty motivating drive, could have gotten the ball back. And Illinois ran a fake punt play, and everybody was just like, oh, we don't know what's happening. Let the uh, tight end run like 37 yards on a fake that punt. That sounds exactly like the teams that Cash are playing against. Yeah. Aw, poor guys. Yeah. And Cash is undefeated for those wondering. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're dropping frames. Cool. I um I'm working with the coach right now to set up a end of year celebration for all the boys because they're working so hard on the field. They've got two more games left. That'll be fun. I'm excited. All right. It looks like we're dropping a lot of frames. So sorry if this looks terrible. Should we call it? Yeah. Look, we're losing three percent of our frames right now for some reason. Okay. So thanks for watching. This will probably come out early next week. So my prediction, after we've actually been to the yeah, Michigan game, my prediction is that Michigan is going to lose to Michigan state, Aww. which is terrible because Michigan state actually is bad. That's really bad. So yeah, it's going to make you cry and you're going to be miserable the entire night. I'm not going to cry. I'm so excited. No. All right. Thanks for watching. And, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye.